So today we will be discussing about the PNP transistor and an experiment to find the characteristics of the PNP transistor. So we start with the, the PNP transistor and I presume that you must be knowing about the semiconductors and the PN junction we have discussed it earlier. So PN junction is a device having a one junction, one P-type material and one N-type semiconductor joins and forms the PN junction. Whereas a transistor is a two junction device, two P, they are two P junction and one N junction is sandwiched between the two P junctions. So here we have two poles, so it is a bipolar transistor and it is used for amplification and switching purposes. There is one another, another type of transistor called an NPN transistor where a P-type material is sandwiched between two N-type materials. But we in the, uh, in the present uh, case, we will be discussing only the PNP transistor. So this PNP transistor is a three terminal device, one terminal connected to each of the three semiconductors. This junction is called the uh, emitter. The second one is the base, the N-type semiconductor, which is sandwiched, is called the base. And the second P-type conductor is called the collector. So base of the transistor is more negative as compared to the emitter. And the all three terminals in the PNP transistor are different in terms of doping and concentration and size. The emitter is highly doped and exhibits about 100% current of the transistor, while a base is lightly doped, which is responsible for the transistor action and controls the number of holes in the case of the PNP transistor, while the collector is lightly doped and comes in a bigger size as compared to other two terminals and collects the number of holes. It is a current control device and is also known as a sinking device, which it sinks current into a its base terminal and current flows out of the collector. The collector current flows from the emitter to the collector and holes act as majority charge carriers in the PNP transistor, while in the NPN transistor, the electrons are the majority charge carriers. The PNP transistor is like a combination of diodes. If we take two diodes, like here is the P type semiconductor of this diode which acts as the collector. The p-type region of the second diode acts as the emitter and both the n-type terminals of both the diodes are joined and commonly known as the base. Now we come to how the word PNP transistor works. So as we have seen that the PNP transistor comes with two p-n junctions. One is the emitter base junction and the second is the base collector junction. An emitter base junction is forward bias and shows low resistance while the collector base junction is reverse bias and of course the reverse bias will show high resistance. In the PNP transistor emitter voltage is much larger than the collector voltage. This is the emitter voltage. This is much larger. In order to conduct for PNP transistor, the emitter voltage must be positive as compared to the base and the collector. The transistor will turn on when there is a small current flowing from the emitter to the base and then to the collector. When a proper bias voltage is applied at the base terminal, it gets biased and all the holes present at the emitter terminal moves to the base terminal where they combine with the electrons present at this terminal. This generates, this combination generates a small current at the base terminal. Since the base is very thin, so it is difficult for the base to accept all the holes injected by the emitter and as a result most of the holes leave the base and enter the collector current, collector which constitutes the collector current. 
In this way, the conduction through an PNP transistor takes place. Now, how the transist this transistor is connected? The voltage between the base and the emitter is called the base emitter voltage. It is written as VBE or VEV. You can write. This is ne negative at the base and positive at the emitter because the ba emitter base junction is forward bias. So this is P-type material, so it is connected to the positive end of the battery. The base is always negatively biased. The emitter supply voltage is positive to the collector. So for a PNP transistor to conduct, the emitter is always more positive with respect to both the base and the collector. The base voltage, which is biased negative with respect to the emitter, and connected to the base resistor, there's a resistance in the circuit R, which is used to limit the base current. To cause the base current to flow in a PNP transistor, the base needs to be more negative than the emitter by approximately 0.7 volts for a silicon device and 0.3 volts for a germanium device, with the formulas need to be calculated at the base resistor. And in principle, the emitter current is equal to the, like we have seen, when the holes conduction start, when the holes from the emitter enter into the base region, some holes are lost in the base region and the rest of them are transmitted to the collector. So the number of holes which are coming from the emitter, uh, emitter are, some of them are lost in base and the rest moves to collector. So the emitter current is equal to the sum of the base current and the collector current. IE is the emitter current, IB is the base current and IC is the collector current. So the transistor is connected into a circuit in three types of modes. First is the common emitter transistor. Second is the common base transistor and the third is the common collector. We present here the common base. This is the base. This is the NPN transistor. This is the base. Base is common and the emitter and the collector are connected to the open circuit. So in the common base configuration, we have three kinds of characteristics. First is the input characteristic, second is the output characteristic, and the third is the current transfer characteristic or called the mutual characteristic. So the first one, the input characteristic, is a graph between the variation of the emitter current, how the emitter current varies with the change in the base emitter voltage. So we get a, this kind of a graph. We get this kind of a graph. Which in the starts at totally non-linear and then becomes linear, like the PN junction. The, the second one is the output characteristics, which is a variation of the collector current with the collector base voltage, keeping the emitter current constant. In the input characteristics, the collector base voltage was kept constant and the output characteristic we are keeping the emitter current constant and we are studying the variation of the collector current by varying the uh, collector base voltage. So it starts, uh, the conduction starts gradually and the current becomes constant after a certain period of time. And third one is the current transfer characteristic which is the variation of the collector current with the emitter current. Like the emitter current is the input current and collector current is the output current. So it's a graph between the input current and the output current. So this comes a straight line and we are keeping the collector base voltage constant. And the ratio of the two currents is defined as the current gain. The current gain of a transistor 
is an important quantity which decides the application of the that particular transistor so this is the experiment to study the pnp transistor characteristics the circuit diagram is sim uh, simple this is a pnp transistor this is emitter collector and the base base is commonly connected and there is a voltage applied between the emitter and the base and to, to the power variable power supply we connect a voltmeter in parallel to study the voltage and an emitter in the series to the uh, emitter emitter is a series is connected to the emitter of the transistor in the output circuit there is a emitter connected to the collector and to the collector base variable supply a voltmeter is connected in parallel to measure the collector base voltage so for the first observation table we'll be keeping the collector base voltage constant firstly we set it at 0 volt now we vary the emitter base voltage from the input side and note the corresponding emitter current both this voltage and current are from the input side only the output collector base voltage has been kept constant so this is the input characteristics and this is a sample readings when we plot graph of these readings we get this kind of a curve for the output characteristics we can put the emitter current constant that is the input side current is kept constant and we vary the output voltage that is the v collector base voltage and we vary the, we note down the collector current so this is the output voltage and this is the output current we vary the output voltage and we note the corresponding volt output current for a fixed value of the input current we get this kind of a curve for these set of sample readings for the mutual characteristics we keep the output voltage constant that is vcb and we vary the emitter current and note the corresponding collector current. so from the three graphs we can see that the input characteristic curve shows that the emitter current increases rapidly with a small increase in the input voltage after the knee voltage at constant output voltage before the knee voltage the conduction is very small at output voltage vcb made more negative the emitter current rises more rapidly the output characteristic curve shows that the input current output current is approximately independent of the output voltage at constant input current even at zero output voltage there is a finite value of the output current and this is called the leakage current the forward current transfer characteristic curve indicates that the output current is nearly related with the input current but the value of the collector current cannot be greater than the emitter current hence current gain will be less than 1 why it cannot be greater than the emitter current because obviously some of the holes will be lose lost in the base which will constitute the base current there is no possibility that the number of holes are going to increase in the base so this is what the experiment look like this is a circuit diagram let like, uh, like i explained earlier and we have to we study the characteristics in the common base so this is uh, we have having in the circuit we are having two transistors available to us the pnp and the npn transistor so we will be connecting this pnp transistor and we are not concerned with the npn one the input arrow shows the pnp transistor these are the voltmeters input and output and these are the input currents and output currents 
is the emitter current and collector current emitter base voltage and collector base voltage and that there are two power supplies one for the input and one other for the output and the emitter current and the collector current let's see in the circuit you can see the ranges of the two voltmeters are different because in the reverse bias you have to supply a greater voltage so you can see that the, this is the input power supply and this is the output power supply output is 0 to 10 volts input is 0 to 1 volt we connect this power supply to the voltmeter is connected to the power supply in parallel similarly another voltmeter is connected in parallel to the output power supply now we will connect in series we have connected the voltmeter and the power supply here voltmeter and power supply both these things have been connected now we need to have the emitter in series with the collector which will be connected to the negative of the power supply Now we connect the emitter in series with this power supply. And the transistor collector. Other end of the power supply will be connected to the base of the transistor. Now we are connecting the emitter to the uh, emitter to the emitter of the transistor. Now the base will be connected to the negative of the input power supply. Now the second connection of the base will be to the collector power supply, output power. This is the connections these are the connections now we can we are using these two knobs we can vary the input voltage and the output voltage so we can start our experiment now these are the references i think that uh, this will be helpful for you in performing your experiment And in the end, I would like to request you to subscribe the channel and leave your reactions and questions in the comment box. Thank you.